Are you ready for some high adventure coming up next on the Mutual Audio Network? The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Oh, man, I cannot believe this. Ugh, I'm charging double. Well, what you working on? A space shuttle. Want to ride when I'm done? Your stand-up routine is getting a little old, Dale. I think I'm hysterical. That's one. Did you get it or not? I did. Fantastic. Do you know how much Dennis charged for one of these? I'm a mechanic, not the Sultan of Siam. Hmm. Who could tell? Now who's trying to be the stand-up? Your cousin is going to be thrilled that you found this. We go out to eat pizza, the retainer's taken out and lost, and then wailing like you've never seen in your life. It's what I do. Speaking of the cash register dinging, I figure that ought to help your private eye business. Uh, that's just a 20. Uncle Dale, my rates are 300 a day. From just going to Votech a couple of months? Have you lost your mind? It it wasn't just Votech. We've been over this before. I worked at a couple of agencies before I struck out on my own. And it's working out for you, huh? You've got to resort to having relatives hire you to look for missing teeth retainers in the garbage. 300 a day? You only work for 15 minutes. I'll call it a half a day. Call it a relative's discount. A relative who supported you in the style you're accustomed to living because my sister is a flake. Okay, let's call it that. Hand me that socket over there. So, what's wrong with the space shuttle? Your aunt. (laughs) Not said. Good man. So let me segue here for half a mo. Segue away. I'm all for you starting your own business. It shows initiative and desire, which is good. You going to finish your thought? I was waiting for you to say but. Should I? It helps cue me. But... I told you to get a loan to get better digs for your office instead of the hole you've got. Hire a secretary. Make it legit. I can't help it if my office is janky. I have to build my business up. One missing retainer at a time? You have to work hard to work hard, Monty. I've seen what that does to a man. You mean Dad? Oh, your grandpa's worked hard for every dollar he ever swiped or earned. I know that. He tells me that every time I see him. And he also says I'm a nut for trying to be a private investigator. He also is on meds for his nerves, ulcers, hernia, diabetes, heart condition. Is this where I say loud and clear? I don't know. Try it. Loud and clear. It is. Now go say hi to Jenna and your aunt. All right. And then go home. I'm not feeding you any more this week. Hello, office of mine. Four foot by five. Man, there's gotta be an easier way of doing this gig. Just where are you going on this fine evening, lady? (laughs) Who died, Dale? Why do you think anyone died? That's the only reason you'd call me at three in the morning. Good point. So, who croaked? Your granddad. I'm sorry, Monty. Everyone else has gone to the house to eat and visit. Come on. And don't worry, there'll be enough for you to take home in a doggy bag. Isn't that a comfort? Buck up, Monty. He lived hard, bought and sold, and he died. Sounds like a Hallmark card. Yeah, I'm pretty good at cheering people up. Aren't you ever? There's some news that will cheer you up. Come on. Lady, you're making my foot hurt with all this walking.
this is exactly the way I always saw it. Thank your grandpa. I have. Multiple times. He wouldn't have left you a cent if he knew you were going to do this. I appreciate your words of undying encouragement. Sorry. I played the honesty card. Should have waited with that one. I'm going to do this, Dale. I hear you. Do you think it's big enough? It's exactly the right size. It's set up for other folks to work here. You gonna start hiring? Nope. I've got a better idea. Don't tell me. Believe me. You don't want to know. But I will say this. I've learned that it isn't about what you can do. It's how you look doing it. Smoke and mirrors? Yeah, it's something like that. Okay, great. This is me not wanting to know any more. This is also me having you take me to lunch with some of your inheritance money. Here we go, yet again. Hi, hon. What's going on? Yes, at the spa. Yes, I'm meeting the ladies from the bar afterwards. I should be home by six. Sure. Sure, I understand. Yeah, babe. I'll keep a light on for you. You too. Now you're mailing packages? What in the name of Elton John is going on? Ooh, nice setup on the office. What is your name? Ah, Monty Adams. Sorry about the wait. Been a busy day around here. I saw your website. Really? That's great. It made your agency look like you got a good reputation. Always important. Monty Adams. Belinda Silverberg. And a lot of operatives. Is that the right word? Yes. And they're all out on assignment. You know, skip traces, missing persons, prenups, divorce cases. You do divorce cases? In the trade, we call that bread and butter. I hope your case is... Oh, no. Not at all. Everything you say is confidential. That's what we do. It's just... I don't want to sound like a fool. You won't. I have a strange request, then. Fire away. I want you to follow me. Uh Huh? I told you. You did at that. The next obvious question is, why? Do I have to answer that? Yes, yes, of course. It's just that... Mrs. Silverberg. Belinda, isn't it? Yes. I'm your confidant here. The priest. Your psychologist. All of those? You better believe it. The point is, I can be trusted, and I have to be, if I'm to know what to do for you. Would you excuse me for just a minute? Certainly. Hey, Harry. Don't forget to run that background check for Tritech, okay? They called earlier today and have a dozen or so possible employees that need to be checked out. Yep. That's it. Thanks, Harry. Tritech? As in Tritech Industries? Yeah. We do some occasional work for them. From time to time. Impressive. Just part of what we do around here. Mr. Adams, I feel like walking. How about you? Sure. So I married Mr. Silverberg when I was really young. And he's an octogenarian? Not quite. In his mid-fifties. Cheers, Mr. Silverberg. Hmm. Good coffee. Has a wife young enough to be his daughter. Uh, Let's say granddaughter. It's all relative. Isn't it, though? So, Mr. Silverberg. Dennis. His name is Dennis. So, you've got a busy corporate head honcho for a hubby with an expense account that would make my glands swell, a run of all the clubs and social groups in town, and he thinks you've still got time to run around on him? That's about the size of it. And you think he's got someone tailing you? As in right now following you? I haven't seen anyone. Not today, anyway. So you want me, the agency, to run surveillance on you in hopes of seeing who has eyes on you? There is 1,200 in there as a retainer. Consider me, us, retained. You start the moment you put this in your pocket. I'm on the clock. Come see me in three days and we'll compare notes, Mrs. Silverberg. It's Belinda. (laughs) It certainly is. Not to use a cliché or anything, but we've got a problem. She's been all over town the past few days. What about the guy? This 
Monty Adams. I think he's... I realize that. I understand that. I think she's playing ring around the rosy and knows she's being followed. She's being very careful. I think this Adams needs some pressure. Yes, I do. I realize she's the job. I know that. He could... I really think... All right. Hands off, then. He's getting a visit no matter what you say. We're eating out tonight. You're not invited. I'm wounded. With your bankroll? Speaking of which, how's business? Any clients yet? Yes. That's why I'm here. I can't see your face. How about now? I charge whatever you do for a consultation fee. Dale, this is serious. Do you see me cracking a smile? Give me the oil plug, will you? Your Aunt Julie stopped long enough for me to change the oil in her car. Hypothetical question for you. Oh, great. Meet her parents first is my answer. Did you not hear the part where I'm serious? I need to track down a vehicle. How would I go about doing that? You're the private investigator. You tell me. Let me back up. I have a partial tag number. I've run the usual searches the database investigators normally use for searches like this, but it was a bust. That's easy then. You got the number wrong. Couldn't have. Did you get any hits? No. Wrong number, Miss Marple. Did you try the DMV? Let's just say that we have a hate-hate relationship. Color me surprised. How about records of the car getting worked on? Ah, uh, now the light goes off. Since I'm a mechanic, you thought... Go away, Monty. You're a nuisance. This is very important. Someone is following my client, and I'm trying to find out who it is. If she's following your client, then follow your client. That's what I was hired to do. And yet you're here. Are you sure this was a good choice of profession for you, Monty? Now is not the time for familial wisdom. I hate to pull the, you were practically left on my doorstep, Moses, but your mother, my dip of a sister, decided to run off with some bass player. Not the best choice. I mean, whoever goes for the bass player. Your mother. And who knows where your dear old dad went. And okay, so she straightened herself out. Four states away. That's right, Monty. Exactly my point here. And here's the deal. My roof, my rules. You knew that, and you did pretty well with some minor mistakes along the way. So to answer your question the long way around, I can't help track your car down. That's your line of work. You got your own roof and it's your own rules now. And I know you well enough to know you flip at the first sign of any trouble. You pick this gig, now do it or don't. End of lecture. El Finito. Message received, but you don't get any consultation fee. I'll waive it this time. Now go get me a glass of tea, will you? I'm parched. Good morning. Come on in. Your door was locked. Oh, that. Yeah, morning staff meeting, getting everybody set for the day. Monty Adams. Nice to meet you. If you'll come on back, we can discuss your case. Case? Oh, no, you misunderstand. I don't have a case, as you call it. You don't? Are you with the building people? I know I called about that leak in the bathroom, but... No, not with the building management. I'm trying to come up with a third option here, but I've got nothing. I'm here for the interview... Interview? But we weren't looking. The receptionist position. I'm afraid you've got the wrong office. This is Adams Detective Agency. That's right. And that's where the temp people sent me. We never called any temp. They were very specific about this being the right place. You don't need a receptionist? Not at the moment. She in this morning? I'd love to meet the competition. She's in the back with one of our operatives taking notes. Which temp agency... Could I meet your receptionist? Who are you again? (laughs) What's that? If you don't know, you won't be in business very long. Take two steps to the right. My right. Now who's not very good at this? This wasn't going to work for very long. You know that, don't you? Uh, ma'am, I'm very confused here. I bet you are. Don't open... Deceive much? To use one of my favorite phrases... You're busted, amigo. It's called ethics, Adams. If you're going to berate me, you might as well call me Monty.
This whole business of yours is a fraud. Not true. Whatever your name is. Jody Weller. You're a private investigator too. Nice deduction. I report you for your scam, and your license is jerked, and you never work as an investigator again. My uncle always said the village I was from was missing its idiot. Don't play the sympathy card, Adams. You don't go around creating a false impression with your agency. A big office, plenty of rooms with speakers hidden all over the place, playing a continuous loop of typing voices. Did you see where I was before? A dump. Nobody bothered hiring me. So I inherit some money and decide to rent this place out and put on a front, and it was working. It was is the operative word here. It's called a scam. How did you find out? And to ruin your day even further, your client is the subject of an investigation for my agency. Wait a minute. How'd you know? I'm an investigator. Look it up. No, no, no. How did you know about my setup? You went right to the door. You broke in, didn't you? Put that in your ethical pipe and smoke it, sister. An accusation without proof is just that, buster. The name's Monty, and I'm sure I could find out. You can't even run this place without getting caught running your scam. And hey, what do you mean my client's being investigated? Let me buy you breakfast. What for? I find that food makes bad news go down better. I can't believe you're eating that. It's a burrito! But not a breakfast burrito. I thought you said you'd buy me breakfast, not lunch. I like burritos. I'm easy to convince, especially since half of it is smeared across your face. Give me a napkin, Mr. Spade. So I think ethics was on the table for discussion? What agency did you say you worked for? I didn't. Use your detection and find out. Or do you want to work that hard? All right. So I'm using a bit of false advertising. Ha! <laughs> If a client sees a nice office with up-to-date magazines and a nice coffee maker, they'll want to hire me. Let's change the subject. Your client. That's confidential, and you know it. Five minutes. What about it? Five minutes would be all it'll take for me to have your license under review. In the trade, we call that blackmail. Your client, Belinda Silverberg. She's worried. She should be. Yeah, because you're following her. Duh, she's under surveillance. We were hired to do that. By? Forget you, Monty. If this were spades, I'm holding the trump. She knew she was being followed. Not possible. Score one for the home team. And she hired you to what? Follow her. To run interference. Come on, we're leaving. I hate being blackmailed. can't reach her. Yeah, and no one at the agency has picked her up this morning. We were running team surveillance on her. Naturally. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that time I actually did. Okay, so I may be false representing myself. That doesn't call for you pushing me around. I'm not even supposed to be talking to you. If the head of my agency finds out, he'll fire me. Conflict of interest. Emphasis on the conflict. Why are we here, anyway? Mrs. Silverberg's been making frequent trips to the bank and then mailing nice padded packages. Here. You found out she's got a box here. No, not at all. I just picked one of these places at random. (sighs) Your career as a private investigator is going to go the way of the T-Rex if you don't pull your head out. Has anyone brave enough told you that you get more attractive the angrier you get? That got you to shut up, didn't it? If we weren't in a public place... What? You'd pull your gun on me again? In some states, including this one, you've kidnapped me. (laughs) That's a laugh and a half. If my uncle hadn't taught me it was wrong to hit girls... You'd what? Do not tempt me. I dare you. You hit me! You dared me to. And it was just on the arm. You mean like that? Quit it! There she is. Come on. I've about had it with this getting jerked around. Mrs. Silverberg. What's going on here? You're the one who's been following me. Mr. Adams, what are you doing? You two- Aren't supposed to be here. We figured that out. But look- Go ahead. Tell us we don't understand. That's my husband's- Your husband's what? He's trying to have me killed. Get down! 
Call 911, Monty. Done. Don't call the police. That's about as cliche as... That may be, but I'm deadly serious. Now get me out of here. Mrs. Silverberg, we have to stay and report this. So glad you didn't pull your gun, Jody. It's not like we could have used it or anything. It's not even loaded. I kid you not, I was born when the planets were radically out of alignment. Talk about it later. For now, get me out of here. Come in here and sit down, Miss... What was it again? I would say my name is Mud, or it soon will be. It's Jody Weller, and she's the curse of all mankind. Nope, just you. Now what? I honestly don't know. You two fouled up my getaway. Hey, you just hired me as a rodeo clown for Miss Destructo over there. My husband doesn't trust me. Wonder much? He's also a violent one. Like my shiner? We only have your word for that. You could have given that to yourself. Not likely. Dummy me, I married a much older man who likes his young wife on a very strict schedule. A couple of times I wasn't where I said I would be and he bad me around accusing me of all kinds of tomfoolery. Was he right? Would you believe me if I said no? With that gun pointed at me, I'll believe whatever you want me to. Here. How's that for a show of faith? Could be more of her clever sleight of hand. Loaded. Yep. Hand over your purse. This goes on for the three years of our marriage. I keep to the schedule he wants me to keep. He calls all the time. He checks in with wherever I'm going with people there to make sure I'm telling the truth. And then three weeks ago, I get a flat tire Mr. Bridge Club game he set up for me. And it starts all over again. This time, I've had enough. This is about the time my agency was pulled in to follow you. Now who's breaking the code of ethics? Shut up, Monty. Your whining is getting monotonous. He's an expert on how to hurt people without breaking any bones. I laid up in bed for three days. And yet you don't call the police. I'd bore you with the rhetoric of abusive spouses, but why bother? So you go back to his routine, except we're keeping constant tabs on you. And the trips to the bank and the postal service, not cash, that'd be stupid. Traveler's checks. And preloaded debit cards to accounts my husband doesn't know about. So I'm hired to distract Jody and her agency while you look for a window out of town? Out of the country. Your passport. The men in the car are a couple of thugs my husband keeps on retainer to do certain jobs. But Silverberg Industries is a textile company. Rich is as rich does, Mr. Adams. Come on, doofus. I know you're not referring to me. You've got nowhere to go if you decide to hightail it out of here. Unless you've got your walking shoes on, which you don't. I'm not going anywhere. I'm relying on you. Both of you. Please? Yeah, yeah. Nice digs, by the way. Thanks. Now zip your lip and give me a minute to think. She seems pretty desperate to me. And I don't like hubbies who use their wives for punching bags. Did you see the shiner she's got? I mean, why go to all that trouble of setting up a traveler's checks and debit cards? I mean, why go through all that trouble of setting up traveler's checks and debit cards? This lady is in real trouble. I take it the phrase, zip the lip, has no meaning where you come from? Come on, Jody. This is serious. Let's talk about Sirius, shall we? Okay, it's a broken record already. I know, I know. False advertising and all that. Not you. Me. A private investigator has a code to follow, which is dictated by the laws of the land. Just me harboring the target of my client's investigation has broken the bedrock from what our profession stands for. We stand for watching some lady get beat down by her husband just because he's paying to have her followed? You know what I mean. I vote we let her go. Silverberg is a powerful man with a lot of dough, and that carries weight. How will your agency handle this? We'll have to confront Silverberg and report it to the police. We were shot at not half an hour ago, Jody. What do you think her chances are? You were talking about out-and-out deception. Yeah. Dip your toes in. The water's fine. So the plan is, we'll go back to the postal place where you have your packages stashed. We'll go and get you a ticket on a plane. I still don't like the idea of going to an airport. My husband will have it watched. We'll book you a private plane. It'll take him longer tracking your ticket. And by that time, you'll be in Houston and on your way to Jamaica. Why not just rent a car or have you drive me out of town? 
I'm sure he's already made contact with my agency, which means he'll have a description out on me and my car, and all car rental places are out. This is the best way. Trust us. We're trusting you. (sighs) Okay, I will. And don't move a muscle while we're out and about. We'll be back in a few hours. Thank you. Really, thank you. Okay, good thing you called ahead. The private plane I got to Houston was nearly booked. Now the postal place? Aren't you the bright boy? (laughs) That's what they tell me. Open him up. No way. It's our personal property. All part of the service. Okay, we've got some traveler's check, debit cards, about ten grand worth. About twenty grand in this one. I feel dirty. Shit, another career. What's she need with a copy of... Hey! It's a copy of Silverberg's will. What does she need that for? See a headline lately? He was gunned down in the early hours this morning? I had the murder weapon in my hand an hour ago! We've been idiots about this thing. Speak for yourself. Where are we going? Back to my place. You don't think she'll be there, do you? We have classes for that, you know. She's in here for a cool four mil. Wait, wait, wait! Let's think this through. She's got to know we'd find out. So she's got us running around so she can get out of town. That means she's got another stash somewhere. It also means she needs transportation. Monty! As in a taxi from your house. I'll start through the list of taxi services. Brilliant! Okay, I take that back. I told you, the bus station! You said the exact opposite! Never! You're also forgetting that she could already be out of town, slowpoke. Hey, what are you... Get her gun, will ya? Oh, sure. I thought you had this. Get your hands off of me! Absolutely, your worship. Just as soon as we call the police. Monty, call the police. Right. Hail the conquering hero. Beats looking for retainers in the garbage. I'll have you know I tell everyone that I gave you your start. I just wanted to make sure you saw. I saw, I liked, and I approve. Congrats. You've just entered into a much larger world. Now go say hi to your Aunt Julie and eat some of her pie. (laughs) Done. I figured you'd be by eventually. Good. With all the press coverage that my agency has been getting? Absolutely. I knew you'd have to hire me to help you out of your jam with your agency. Uh, no. I'm here to work. You've got a job. Uh Uh-uh. It was mutual. I bent the rules and caught a murderer, but broke a client agreement to do it. I don't like your agency. Thus, the resignation. I don't have any openings. Oh, yes you do, Monty. I could bury you in your agency. What is it with you and blackmail? I need work, and I know you're about to be hip-deep in it with the free press you've been getting. I work solo. Not anymore. And it'll be 60-40. Not if my life depended on it. 50-50. 55-45. 55 for me and 45 for you. Done. Will the partnership last for these two uncouth sleuths? Find out in the next episode of Gumshoes. You have been listening to Stage Struck Audio Theater's production of Gumshoes, Smoke and Mirrors. In the cast, Monty, Austin Hancock, Jody, Alice Cashman, Dale, Brett Jones, Belinda, Bethany Kanu. Script by Brett Jones. Stage Struck Audio Theater is a production of Wichita State University Theater Department. (laughs) 
Are you in the mood for a good laugh? <laughs> or maybe a good scream? How about some childlike wonder? Or a thought-provoking mystery? Then get your ears ready for a treat, because the Mutual Audio Drama Network presents shows every day for your enjoyment. Each day is a different genre featuring the talents of a huge pool of audio drama masters. Oh, and some clever comedy creators as well. <laughs> Subscribe to the Mutual feed and get them all, or choose the genres you really love. Ooh. You'll find the Mutual Audio Network at all your favorite places, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, EarBuddies, Podcast-O-Rama, Casting Call, Cod past and wherever quality shows are found. Okay, I made a few of those up. Or simply go online to MutualAudioNetwork.com. And of course, it's all free. free. The free. Mutual Audio Drama Network. Listen and imagine together. Maintaining social distancing, of course.